Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by ZipRecruiter, your one-stop solution for all your hiring needs. Post a job to 100-plus job sites with one click. Rank candidates, set up interviews, and onboard new employees. Visit ZipRecruiter.com twist to sign up for a free trial. And by PagerDuty, serving as the hub of your operations, aggregating all of your infrastructure, monitoring tools, and alerting the right people and teams at the right time. Sign up today at pagerduty.com slash twist and get a free t-shirt with your first alert. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. What an amazing episode of This Week in Startups we have for you today. It's a little startup known as Cisco, and my friend Rowan Trollop, who works there, is going to debut their new teleconferencing system and their business messaging app, which will remind you just a wee bit of Yammer, Slack, and uh, HipChat. It's a very interesting episode because we get to see inside of a large corporation that's bought a bunch of startups and how they're trying to be entrepreneurial. We always talk about, hey, never worry about the big companies because they're not moving very fast and they're not going to compete. But in this case, you have a big giant like Cisco, which has made an incredible telepresence product for 1500 bucks that they've matched with the power of Yammer, Slack, HipChat, et cetera, IRC. It is a very insightful episode and a very cool product. Stick with us. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't gonna live like me. Until we get the money, spend the money and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money and defeat you. Hey everybody, hey everybody, it's Jason Calacanis, and we are here, and I've got a raspy voice because the Warriors beat LeBron James and four other players uh, <laughs> on the Cleveland Cavaliers last night, and I'm wearing my David Lee jersey represent, um, and apologies if my voice is a little raspy, but uh, I was screaming my brains out. One more game to go, and the Warriors will be the world champions. We've got two swings at bat, and I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to get it done in game six, and they'll... Uh, Come back here to a huge celebration on Market Street. So on the program, it's This Week in Startups, right? We talk about startups all the time, but entrepreneurship is finding its way inside of big companies. And that trend um, is something that I think Cisco is probably doing the best job of any major company um, out there. And I know this because one of my friends, Rowan Trollop, is now working for them. You previously were with Symantec for yep, two decades. Yep. You started at Semantic when you were like 15 started, years old. I started at Peter Norton when it was a startup. And you then, you worked at Peter Norton, which got bought by Symantec. Yeah, and then we became, you know, a multi-billion dollar unicorn from the 90s. <laughs> which is crazy. And it was in Santa Monica, I remember. Yeah, that's right. And you grew up in California. Yeah, in, LA. California in LA. Hollywood. But you were a bit of a child prodigy. I mean, you started working there for Peter Norton at what age? 18. 18. Mm -hmm. And you didn't go to college? No. And you started Couldn't working. Couldn't afford it. Couldn't and afford going to college. I was, like, I was like the hottest startup at the time was Peter Norton Computing, Norton Utilities. Right. All what were you, a developer or something yeah, at engineer. that time? You were an engineer at that time at 18, self-taught. Yeah, yeah, yeah self-taught. I had been doing it since I was 11. Like, how many so. people were at Peter Norton's company at the time? Uh, I don't know. It was like one floor, like a building like this, about a floor, so 100. 100 people. Um, and that became one of the largest companies, my God. Yeah, it, it, it blew up. Uh, Symantec bought us. Yeah. And then uh, the thing that actually blew up with Nort was like Norton Antivirus and Norton Utilities and all that stuff. Yeah. And people don't remember, Windows was a bit of a disaster for the 90s. Understatement of the uh, day. Yeah. Understatement of the day. <laughs> I mean, why did Windows have such security problems? Were they just bad at it? You know, they chose open versus secure. I don't think anyone knew what was coming with the internet. So Windows yep. was developed before the internet, right? Right. So it was sort of like, or really before it took off, 95, right. you know, somewhere in there. So. Uh, I don't think they knew what they weren't ready for that. Um, mm. And it was company like, companies like ours, the the guy us at Norton, we were just really good at closing off all the holes in Windows. Whether it was like the disks would crash or you deleted a file and you need to get it back, that's the stuff we were the experts at. Was right. like making Windows really work for people. Yeah. And when security became a problem, boom, there we were. That was really where it went supernova. That's where it went supernova. Um, so you did twenty years there. Yeah. You put your two decades in. Yep. And then I know you had a lot of different opportunities to maybe become a startup founder. You had mm -hmm. a lot of different CEO gigs. Yep. I mean, you ran at the peak at Symantec. How many employees? Uh, well, we had 20,000 in the company, and you know, I had about half of those, a quarter of those. Wow. Quarter. I was the president of the cloud. So when we when 
cloud sort of started happening, I, I took over the yeah. and said, we're going to go do cloud. So I was president of the cloud SaaS business for, on the security side. And then about a year ago, you were two like, years. hey, or two years ago, you were like, hey, Jason, I'm going to Cisco. I've got, yeah. I got a really special project. Can't talk to you about it, yeah. but I'll talk to you in a year. Yeah. And so I went by last year and I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. You got to come on the show and show it. Now, of course, everybody's been in a Cisco conference room at like one of these big VCs or a big company and you right. see this- The like, guys with money. <laughs> the guys with money spend a quarter million dollars, half a million dollars building these executive boardrooms that get yeah. used for two hours a week. Yeah. Or maybe two hours a month, but sometimes more, um, where they have these incredible, incredible acoustics and these beautiful teleconferencing systems, which obviously use the cloud, mm -hmm. and they're perfect and buttery. Now, listen, I used to go to a meeting. I'm a huge fan um, for these things, but there's a totally different level when you set up the gear in the room. But that stuff is not obtainable, right? Right. So you have like conferencing stuff, like um, Google Groups or Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts. Then you have like go to meeting, yeah, and WebEx. then you had, you know, which is like maybe fifty bucks a month or thirty mm -hmm. bucks a month. I'm not sure what it costs. And then you have over here two hundred fifty thousand dollars Cisco room, right? Exactly. With nothing in between. Exactly. You built the in between. We did. That was my vision. So I came from being extraordinarily frustrated. I remember driving down the 101 one day, like 2009, yeah. going, what the heck is going on here? Like, why is it that when I go to the office, I have to go backwards in time with my communications technologies? Right. And we had deployed like three or four of those $100,000 rooms or whatever. There was a time it was Halo. And I was, this stuff's like silly. I need something for everyone. Right. And so that was my like kind of driving motivation over the last three years was bring this stuff to everyone. And okay. to do that, you got to scale a totally different scale, right? You got to have something that you don't need IT for. You got to have something that is super simple. You can plug it in. Anyone can figure it out at the right price. You know, I figure the right price for a conference room would be maybe the size of, you know, you got these beautiful TVs in here. Yeah. About the price of one of these TVs, 1500 bucks, 2000 bucks. Yeah, so, it's like yeah. nobody ever thinks like, even if a startup only raised a quarter million dollars, if they spent $1,000 or $1,500 on a TV, they would never question yeah. it. In fact, all my friends that run startups, and I'm, I do a bunch of stuff with startups on the side, come to me all the time and say, oh, you're at Cisco now. Do you have something for me? Right. And they need this big time. Like, you know, sure. Chris at Gobbler is constantly on my case about got to give me something, got to give me right. something. So, well, here it is. Let's just around. take a look at here it. it what is. is this device we're looking at here? So uh, this is our, view of the camera. Yeah, this is our little do-it-yourself telepresence system. Okay. What's it um, called? It's called the Cisco SX10 is the model number. SX10. Yeah, so but, you guys are still doing a great job on branding. <laughs> yeah. Out of, out of How do you control. get the number SX10? At a bit, let me ask you a question. Oh, I don't, we don't company. promote it with that number. Right. But, the, but at a big company like... Small. S is for small. Got it. Yeah, but when, it, when you're at a company, like yeah. a big company like that, is there somebody whose job it is to name everything? Is there somebody who comes or up Or is there like numbers? a whole department or a floor that names there's, stuff? There's probably like a whole like organization of people. That is like, by the way, we've, um, yeah. we've looked at your device, Rowan, and it's now being called yeah. the SX10. 10, and here's yeah. why the legacy systems. Yeah, um, I call it DIY video conferencing. DIY video conferencing. Super right. simple. So this thing is fifteen hundred bucks. Yep. And it's a computer in there. It's an Android. Yep. Operating system or something. Yep. Basically, and you plug it in, and it just. Yeah. So I, I mean, I brought it in today. So you're, yeah, you brought it into the studio here at yeah. WeWork. Your, your studio doesn't have video in it uh, no. for this purpose. No. So I brought it in. I plugged uh, you know two cables, HDMI, and I used the TV that was already here. Yep. So we got it right Easy here. Easy peasy. So that's just some LG TV that was already sitting right. in your studio. There's another one over there above yep. you. And uh, you had an Ethernet jack, so we plugged it in there. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And then I turned it on, and uh, there's no remote. You actually use our app in the App Store to control it. Okay, and so let's go to that. Now. So 1500 bucks, you get a beautiful video conference in your room. Yep. You get that little device. It's in reach of everybody. So now what does the app look like, and what's the interface here? Yeah. Because that's the other thing that's like, once you get into one of these Cisco systems, everybody's bit, or any of these conference room systems, like every time I go into a conference room, there's like three different controls. Yeah, how do you control it? There's five different pages of documents, yeah. and nobody can figure out how to do it. Then you call the reception. She doesn't know, she or he doesn't know. Then they call ID. That person, IT comes. It's not working. There's yeah. a cable. There under the desk and the meeting's over. Exactly. It's a disaster. So the way I look at it is there's like seven minutes that happen at the beginning of every meeting where people try and fiddle around. So one thing we wanted to do is there's no dialing. There's no telephone numbers. Okay. You don't you can't you don't dial telephone numbers with this thing. Okay. But uh, that's how it used to work. You had to dial the to Cisco work. number. Yeah, and if you walked into this room and someone and, and and you had never been in the room and someone said, Well, let's do a video, how would they call you? You'd have to yeah. find the number. Hmm. Well, we wanted to do away with all of that complexity, literally zero touch. Okay. So the first thing we had and to wait, do. And wait, there's a secret here of yeah. how it does that. And yeah, I, we're going to The show secret that. of how it pairs your phone to the device, to the SX10, I think is probably the hottest piece of this technology. We're going to tell you about it yeah. when we get back on commercial break. There we go.
Hey, everybody, your company is only as good as the people you hire, and that is obvious. We all know that. And posting jobs in one place won't find you quality candidates. No, you need a one-stop solution for your hiring needs. You need to post to 100 job sites with a single click and instantly be matched with candidates from 4 million resumes, and that is ZipRecruiter. It has been used by 400,000 businesses, and they rank the candidates, set up interviews, and they onboard your new employees, employees with no placement fees. Pricing is based on how many jobs, are posted by the hiring manager and we've used it here at lunch and we just actually with our first gig we received six high quality uh, candidates in the first day for our designer and ranking and managing candidates was painless and easy with their interface um, it's a four day trial for you at ziprecruiter.com slash twist so go to ziprecruiter.com slash twist and get a four day free trial ziprecruiter.com slash twist four day free trial it is an amazing product and uh, like I said we've had a great response from using it in the first um First, with the first job. I mean, the first day we got six great candidates, so that was amazing. Thanks again to ZipRecruiter for sponsoring independent media like This Week in Startups, and go ahead and give it a shot. It's an amazing product that'll help you with all of your recruiting needs. Thanks again at ZipRecruiter. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash twist. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. My guest today is Rowan Trollop. You can follow him on the Twitter, Rowan Trollop, 2Ls, 1P. And he is uh, some senior vice president of yada, yada, yada at Cisco. I don't even know. What. What's your title? The collaboration Technology. I run the collaboration company. stuff at Cisco. Gotcha. SVP. That's very, that means yeah. super very important. Yeah, not really. No, no, SVP is as high as it goes, or EVP is the next one? Uh, EVP. EVP. All right. So there's, there's another, get another level yeah. for you to attain, yeah. uh, even beyond this. Um, and he's been working uh, on Cisco's new SX10, fifteen hundred bucks, pretty cool. Um, but there's uh, no phone number for it, uh, and this is really brand new. Like this yeah. isn't in the market yet. No. When does it go to market? By the way, when Soon. can I buy one? Shortly. Soon, shortly, mm-hmm. imminently. Mm-hmm. So we're sitting here in Months. the midway part of 2015. Yeah. Took you what a year to develop this? Year and a half? Uh, it took us basically two years to do the backend cloud service. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then to do the iPhone app, which is actually a business message. So we, we combined video conferencing and, and business, that's sort of this hot new category, business messaging. Which started with Yammer. Originally, hip not, chat, mm, Slack, hip chat. IRC. Yeah, it really started with WeChat, uh, with um, with like uh, people using WhatsApp. I would say WhatsApp yeah. kind of was the first kind of like messaging app platform. And people started using it for business. And they started using it for business. And we saw that. I saw that and said, hey, this is awesome. Why can't I do this in at work? Yeah. So we built one of those. But yeah. when we built it, we built it in two parts, a core pat- platform to power it and then the app yeah. itself. So the, okay, let's the see. Let's see key. here. So yeah. we'll pull up the app now. So it's free. You can download Cisco Spark from the App Store. Yeah, so ciscospark.com on the yeah. web, by the way, and yeah. so you can just type in Cisco Spark into your so app So here, I'm just going to open the app, and you will see this looks super, there it is. We, it's super familiar in terms sure. of what it looks like here, right? Yeah. Uh, you've looks got like all of my rooms. Looks like WhatsApp or Slack or HipChat or Exactly. Or and so, so here, here's the room we created just before, uh, just before. Yeah. Here we go. There it is. And you can see we've got support for you know PowerPoint files. You know, super yeah. simple. Scroll around. So you can, you can uh, dump in images. Yeah. Whatever. Here's, here's so this just looks like any other yeah, business chat app, room, right? But where it becomes really uh, much more powerful is I'm going to pick Matt here, for example. So Matt is uh, one of the guys. Now, what we wanted to do, I, I had to think about how to bring startup innovation into a big company. Right. I, bought, I bought three startups, Okay. Uh, and we had one that we had just bought when I got acquired. That's the team that makes up the core of this innovation team. Ah, got yeah. it. Four, four startups that actually we, we plopped here in San Francisco, and we've been working down on Down in Mission Bay. Weeks. Yeah, in Mission Bay. It's a nice so area down there, beautiful. huh? It's beautiful. Yeah. So all I have to do now uh, is I've opened the app, and you can see at the very top of this list, see that SFO-12? Yeah. That's this guy. Got okay. it. Okay. It's got a weird name because it's for our, our, our lab, but that's this guy right here. You just here. took that out of the San Francisco Building yeah. 12, Meeting Room 3 or exactly. something, I bet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have some naming configuration there. So, but in order to call Matt, I don't even I, know In about my this. startup, that could just be Conference Room A or Conference Room B. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, what, okay, what's beautiful about this is I didn't have to pair these two devices. It used yeah, high-frequency audio tones. Okay. So as soon as this guy turns on, he starts emitting a code in high-frequency. And hmm. this guy turns on the mic and listens for it, the app. So the app is listening. Wow. The device is emitting. They then both pair through the cloud. And now hmm. that becomes an extra, this is now an extra screen, microphone, sort of audio and video Connected resource. to your phone. It's actually not connected to the phone. It's connected to the cloud. Connected to the cloud. Yeah. So your phone has control over it through the yes. cloud. And so so what that happens, means when we go into a conference room, four or five people, and we all take the app out, 
we can all access it. So yeah, you don't you have to like phone. you don't I have know. to log in or no get a code or a passcode or anything. Yeah. The basic idea is. In fact, it, if you've tried it in this building, you know yeah. what it's like because they have some other technology here. Yeah, I, I also have an office in this building. It's it's hard to do. You have to. Use I think a they have code Crestron and and or yeah. something, and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, Crestron yeah. is like what rich people put in their homes <laughs> exactly. when they want to frustrate themselves. <laughs> it's like always so impressive when I go to like Sky Dayton's house or Chamath's house, and they're like, "Check out my Crestron system or whatever." Yeah, Savant. And it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, "Yeah, okay, can we put the game on?" And they're like, "Yeah, no, totally. Let me just hold on. I gotta call. St I gotta call Steve. I gotta get Steve on the phone. Right. Like, I'm trying to get Directv. They're like, "Oh yeah, patch AV." One yeah. to TV two to remote control three. It never works. But Sky and Chamath are keeping all those AV employees. It's unbelievable. Employed. And then like Sonos, I have Sonos in my house, and Sonos like Snap. my audio always works. That's what I use. They they're like I can't play Spotify. I'm like really I can play radio, Spotify, or Rhapsody. Exactly. <laughs> in ten seconds. So um, okay, so let's show you how this is. This is yeah. basically video for everyone. So what we've done, we've taken video, we've taken mobile messaging. Yeah. And integrated natively video, voice and video conferencing. So all I have to do is hit one button. I went into the room with Matt Cutler. There it is. And there's a little the camera button. on the top right. Hit the you call hit button. It. And then what you're going to see is here, it is using, says at the very top, calling using SFO 12-3 Tongkiang, mm -hmm. okay? Right. And it's going to actually initiate a call. You can see behind me. Oh, it's ringing. On the it's ringing, but I've actually here. just dialed him on my phone. Right. And you're calling him not through your phone, but through this device it on the cloud exactly and the, his device in that conference room because he's in that phone. So this idea that nobody knows how to use numbers. the conference room system ends. Boom, done. You basically Extended. just got rid of the manual. You yes. got rid of the Everything. receptionist job, the IT guy's job. Yep. Everybody's done. Yep. So you just eliminated all these positions. <laughs> no, and but basically, we're going to have lots of these. Now all of a sudden we're going to get amazing video everywhere. Right. So you took hey, the dude. price of it down from... Hey. What was it down to already? Because it wasn't a quarter million dollars, but no, we fifty thousand dollars. I that? on average reduced the prices by eighty five percent across wow. the lineup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I reduced the number of we had like sixty five. So we we did a billion and a half in video. Right. We'd had sixty five different systems. I reduced it down to seventeen uh -huh. systems. Got it. By the way, last year on those systems, we won eight Red Dot awards. I don't know what a Red Dot award. Red is. Red Dot award is like the the Oscars for product design. Oh wow. Okay, Apple last year won six. Wow. Okay, we won eight. Cisco in the history of Cisco. And 25 years of submitting products has won six awards. Wow. For this product lineup, we won eight awards, which is wow. more of just a reflection of that we built something that anyone can use. Right. Like, you know who, who votes on it is people like um, that shoe designer, Jimmy Choo. Right. Like just random people who are really, really super smart, design-oriented. So people. the rooms are down to 25K or 50K or whatever. We the got the, no, we have, a, uh, we have one. Uh, so this one's 1,500. Right. We have one for 7,000. Right. Uh, and then or maybe 5,000 even yeah. on up from there. Got it. But this is the real revolution. You've now got it within like reaching distance. Within reaching distance. A five person or 10 person company yeah. can get one, no big and, deal. And no infrastructure setup needed. That's the key, right? You don't need to cloud. have an IT yeah. sysadmin to set this up. It's all I through mean, the cloud. I did this myself. In 10 is there a subscription? Do you have to pay like a monthly fee to use all the video or is yeah, it by so hour? How does it work? By yeah, megabit? There, we haven't figured out the commercials on it yet, but there's going to be a subscription fee. So the way it works right now, Slack, uh, Spark you can get for yeah. um, for free, right. up to three users. Right. Okay. And then if you want to get 25 user video or you want to get all the enterprise features, all right. that stuff, then you you can buy the messaging or the messaging and meeting capabilities. Got it. And that's so like 15 bucks and 25 bucks a user a month. Got it. So if you have a small company, it's going to be similar to the price of yeah. Slack. Yeah. Um, yes, or actually, exactly. with, maybe Slack and HipChat are maybe half that price. Uh, we're, we're competitive. I competitive, yeah. Because I think what you need to do is make this make it scale. Like maybe I would make it under 25 people is just free. Boom. Yeah. And then go from there. Yeah. So what I really appreciate about well, this it is, it is free for unlimited number of users. Right. It's for a, for a simultaneous users in a video call. Oh, I see. Yeah. So if you're only going to have four or five people in the conference call and you have 20 people in your company, you're only paying for that. Exactly. Got just it. The, oh, so just the simultaneous video users. So right now we have users, we have organizations with thousands of users but it's using it for free. They just Got don't it. get all the sort of, in the similar way to what everyone else is doing in the freemium model. Yeah. You don't get all the enterprise But now, features. what I notice about this is that the quality is vastly superior to like using the camera in- um, Your Mac. The Mac. Now, is that because of the cloud or is that because of the actual optics in the camera? Both, actually. Both, it's, okay. it's all of them working in concert. So number one, we have our own, first of all, we have a way bigger camera here. So if you see- Yeah, when you look at this, the camera, I mean, it looks big. like a big, uh, wide and long camera. Yeah. And and the point there is Matt's sitting, if you see Matt on the screen, he's yeah. sitting in a regular conference room. That is this just... silent Matt? Hey, Matt, what's up, dude? Hey, guys, what's going on? Yeah. Here. Yeah. So and he's, in a, he's not like in a connection. super, this is a regular internet connection. And Over it's, the top. Yeah. 
just through the regular internet. Yeah, whatever they have here in this building. We didn't yeah. know. We just plugged it in and it's work. That's amazing. I mean, it just looks so beautiful. And these are low light cameras too, I guess. Yeah, they work they, super well. You don't need to have any custom lighting. Again, the idea is like has to work everywhere. Has to yeah. work everywhere and anywhere. Now, if I'm in the same chat room here, which I am, I could click on mine and just turn my camera on. Well, um, you're, where I'm right now in a room just with Matt, but if I leave this room, I'll jump it. in a room with you. So Matt, I'm gonna just jump in the, in the room with uh, with Jason. I think I'm in the twist room. I'm in the twist room, I think. So I just clicked on my camera in the twist room. And there I am. I got to make sure I don't gonna, like double echoing in here since we got everybody yeah, in the same yeah. room. So now I've got my thing here and I can join with this. Yeah. That's and pretty now, impressive. What happens is yeah. there you go. You're going to get your image. Now make sure you. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. I got to mute myself. Mute. There we go. I muted myself in time. There you go. Whew. Yeah. So now we've got a three person call. Me, right. And if I talk, you, I take over the big screen just like on anything else. Yep. And you can see really the fidelity of the camera that comes with a Mac is just garbage. Yeah. It's like the cheapest one they could ever put into it. And the fidelity of yours is just Super extraordinary. Crispy. Yeah. So then the idea yeah. is we control the hardware, the software, the network, the, and the cloud. But it's not as complicated as these previous products have been. Not at all. I mean, yeah. I did it. Yeah. All right. So when we get back from the next commercial break, I want to talk. And by the way, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I'm just I'm thinking about it like even when we have a remote guest – you know, it's like it's always hard to have a remote yeah. guests because the, the, it's very hard to get the quality right. Yeah. I mean, GoToMeeting is really solid. Skype isn't very solid. Google Hangouts is terrible. Um, although it seems to be Google Hangouts is pretty good for groups, right? Uh, you know, they're okay. It's okay. But they don't have like the band, the private bandwidth. No. So you're just like subject to whatever the bandwidth is at that time. Yeah. And, and we all work similarly over the top. Yeah. So just using whatever's available. But uh, it's all about like... The ability to recover when when the network degrades, so the the quality of the codec, the the compression decompression yeah. algorithm, super important. All right, when we get back on commercial break, I want to talk about, you know, Cisco now going heads up against HipChat, which is a large company, Slack, which is a smaller but now larger company, and um, you know how to be, how can Cisco be nimble versus these competitors, and then how do you plan on working with uh, yeah. startups? Because good. this is a kind of like a very interesting thing where Cisco's buying a bunch of startups and creating a startup culture inside a big company. How did you get Chambers or whoever to buy into this vision when we get back on This Week in Startups? Hey, everybody, let me take a moment to tell you about PagerDuty. If you don't know what PagerDuty is, it's the thing that developers hate most in their lives. It's when they are at their kid's soccer game or recital. It's when they're at the movies. It's when they're at the gym. They're running a half marathon, and the pager goes off, and something's wrong with the servers. Now, there is a solution for this. Uh, one, you got to build great systems that are redundant, of course. But still, somebody needs to be on call because it's not always your fault. Sometimes, like, some fiber optic line goes down or your hosting company screws up or hardware gets borked. Anything can happen. You know that. And being on call is really brutal because you get these constant alerts. And PagerDuty aggregates all of those monitoring tools. You have all these different monitoring tools. It puts it all into one place, and it pays for itself by keeping developers happy because it sends only the alerts that are necessary to only the people who are on duty, and you can roll... And you don't want to roll your own monitoring system like this. You want to use a professional system like PagerDuty. They've done all the work. It would take you literally years of development time to build this awesome system they've built. And consumers love the apps. They have iOS and Android apps because a lot of your developers are going to be on Android, obviously. Um, and this lets them be on the go and receive alerts. And all the top PagerDuty clients um, are obvious. Atlassian with HipChat, Pinterest, New Relic, Airbnb, Panasonic, Slack, Path. All these great companies use PagerDuty because they want to keep their developers happy and make Make sure that their systems are up and running. In fact, Chartbeat, which is one of the companies I've invested in, uses um, PagerDuty, and PagerDuty gives Chartbeat one central place to send critical alerts. We now have a simple, easy process for on-call scheduling, says Justin Lintz, who is the senior operations engineer at Chartbeat. So here's your call to action, everybody. Go ahead and sign up for a 14-day trial at pagerduty.com slash twist, pagerduty.com slash twist. Get a free t-shirt when you sign up for your first alert. And thank you so much to our friends at PagerDuty, because they built a great product that keeps developers engaged and loving their jobs. Thanks again at PagerDuty. Let's get back to this amazing episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. My guest is Rowan Trollop, and uh, he's with a little startup called Cisco, <laughs> uh, run by a founder named John Chambers. Now, is John still running the place? He has uh, named his successor. Oh, he did name his successor. Chuck Robbins. Yeah. Yeah. And so John's stepping and down And Chuck's July been with the 26th. company forever. 17 years. 17 years. Yeah, so enterprise the, sales. Yeah. 
enterprise salesperson. What is, yeah. And what's the main business that Cisco still is? It the routers, these huge routers that move data around the internet? Yeah, the the, the infrastructure that powers the internet. It's like yeah. half of the business or more. Data and center. Data center is another big piece of it. So even like the stuff that you know a lot of the big cloud providers actually use in the back end is Cisco hardware. Yeah, like these crazy routers that can move so much data, and it's like it never ends. Like yeah, well the internet's just. I mean, Internet of Things now is kind yeah. of you know, cranking up the volumes on, on the internet. So well, Cisco's like a really important company because these competitors out of China, like there's real security concerns about like making sure that we don't bring in these Chinese competitors. Was it Howie or what's the one? Huawei. Huawei. That like, it was amazing. Like Huawei is like literally, I mean, you can't comment on this, but I can. But, like they were <laughs> literally like, copying all the intellectual property from Cisco and then like putting back doors in it for the Chinese government. They're like, yeah, go ahead here, take these routers and put them in American companies. While meanwhile, we're being hacked relentlessly by the Chinese and Google is like, and we're trying to figure out how we censor the Chinese hackers who nobody knows and people want to bring in Huawei's routers. I'm like, are you guys think this is wise? I suggest they buy Cisco routers. <laughs> it's definitely like, a, we really have to think about it as yeah. a country. Like, yeah. who are we going to give our infrastructure to? Because yeah. the attacks are nonstop. Um, but now here's an interesting question. Um, Slack is this really fast-growing company. Awesome. Uh, obviously, they're not going to sell to Cisco. I'm yeah, assuming awesome. you guys tried to buy them. No, actually. No, I didn't try to buy them. No. Uh, but you bought a bunch of other companies. You have HipChat. Atlassian's great yep. product. We yep. use that. Um, although I have a hip chat room now for this week in startups and one for Atlassian. Now you're going into the category. Has, has Cisco's comp- cu- customers even heard of Yammer or, you know, hip chat? Are they using it or is it like not a phenomenon for big corporate America? I would say not yet. Although if you think about the evolution of the category, I mean, we're the leaders in messaging today. Right. So with, uh, we have Jabber. We've had right. that for, for quite a few years. But that's premise-based messaging. And so we've evolved that to business messaging, basically similar. What does it mean, like location based, or so? So Jabber is you know a desktop uh, and mobile based client, but the mm. enterprise IT racks and stacks the server, ah. as opposed to a cloud based mobile first, right. which is what we've now built. So this was Got the natural natural successor to that, right? Um, but we, but more importantly, we combined all the modalities, so voice, video, conferencing, all into one place. And you've. You're moving fast. You feel like you're moving as fast as like these startup companies. And what's it been like? I mean, how did you get John Chambers to sign off of starting a startup inside of Cisco? Yeah, so credit to him. So when I started, I said, I'm going to take this business to the cloud. Right. But that's what I've been doing. I'm not coming here to manage a premise business. And he's like, if anyone's going to disrupt this business, it should be us. So go for it. So um, I, for my first hire was a CTO from Skype, mm-hmm. <laughs> Jonathan Rosenberg, yeah. you know, a luminary in the industry. And I said, we're going to take this baby to the, to the cloud and we're going to make this available to everyone. And so he was on board. We hired a bunch of software people from different software companies and Apple and everywhere else. And we just, and then what we did is we bought, like in succession, we had four startups uh, that mm. we, we bought. We bought, uh, well, Versely was just before I started, but Collaborate.com, who we talked to earlier, Matt, the CEO. Uh, we bought uh, Assemblage, which is a WebRTC startup out of uh, Denmark. And then we just recently completed the acquisition of Trapo. And so I had to bring basically startup DNA into the company mm-hmm. and and create that kind of innovation culture within the organization to go build this thing. And does an organization like Cisco try to expel the startup culture? Does it try to slow it down in all honesty? Yeah. Do you have to protect it? Or do people go, oh my God, look, they're going fast over there. What lessons can we learn? And yeah. do, are you are you having an impact on the rest of the organization, which we is are. going faster and lighter? And Yeah, we, we are having an impact in that. People are looking at that as, and John Chambers has been holding this up as the example, what we've done with Spark, to say, look at what we've done there. We need to do that in other places. And my boss, who's the chief development officer, also has been sort of like really using this as the example. So um, yeah, so I think there is a definitely a recognition of the need to transform the business through these kinds of small, fast-moving teams. And it's a small team. It's not a huge team. Yeah, yeah. under 500 people. Oh, or... yeah, yeah, like under 200. Wow. Yeah. Because a big company, like, to do a project at this scale, they would be like, yeah, you're going to need to have 1,000 people. You can't really do it. That would be the normal way, yeah. yeah. We started with 40, and then we're very selective about adding anyone additional. Did they have, like, a bunch of, like, you have to fill out these TPS reports, you got to fill out this product spec before you do anything, you got to get approval from the board, no. you got to do all this? No. Or did they just say away with the paperwork? Uh, they didn't have any of that, and I didn't deal with any of that. I just yeah. said, this is what we're doing, and you yeah. know, I'm at a senior enough level that I just, by, by also by moving it into a different facility, I just kind of like, 
went. I just ran as fast as I could uh, yeah. and built everything before anyone could say no. It's critical to be in a different physical location. It does. It does help. It does help, especially when you're trying to do internal transformation. Right. Um, and then also being in San Francisco, where a lot of the talent is, mm. for all of our acquisitions that we did, uh, mandatory that they relocate to San Francisco. We literally right. moved everyone here to San Francisco. Wow. Um, it's not cheap. Was a, no, it wasn't cheap for them. But, but I mean, how many of these things would a company like Cisco wind up selling? I mean, it would be not thousands, tens of thousands of these units you expect will be you know, oh, more. There? No, 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 more. We already sell hundreds of thousands, millions, millions of these units, millions. Wow. Yeah. So because think you about do it. billions of dollars. Well, think about it. Okay. So here's a stat for you. 5% of conference rooms today have video stuff in them. Mm -hmm. And most of that, as you know, doesn't work. It's like you go right. in, where's the device? How do I connect it? Everyone wastes time. So that number is going to be, I mean, so like project forward and you're going to say, well, eventually hundred percent of rooms will be natively enabled with this magical technology. Right. That's what I want to create. I want to have hundred percent of the rooms. They're all backed by this awesome cloud service. You don't have to even have to think. You literally say who you want to talk to. You tap the button, and boom, that person just shows up. Now, or will people. these be built into monitors soon, or will be like, what's the next je rev from this? Because that's fifteen hundred, and I yeah. just started thinking about that. Like, wow, I wonder if like we have an all-in-one package. So yeah. we have a package where we've integrated the audio, the video, everything all into one nice, beautiful screen. You can hang it on a wall, and it's like five grand. Right. So that comes you, with the and, monitor. Yeah, yeah, and when you add up like your current and look. I'm buying panels from the same two factories everyone else buys them from. Right. Okay. So you've got my include in my enclosure. Uh, the, the question I think you could ask is, is there some point where this just gets built into a Samsung or whatever? But they have a fundamentally different model uh, mm. where they're looking for the lowest cost flat screen possible. And so right. spending you know five hundred dollars on a on a piece of glass is not something that they're interested in doing. But it is something yeah. that I'm interested in doing. Now. Um, do you see this going down to the individual desktop level? Because if the cameras really suck in the laptops, like I used to carry actually like that Logitech, they had mm -hmm. a really nice Logitech 1080p camera. I always tell when we had guests on the show, like, hey, with GoToMeeting, put this 1080p yeah. camera yeah. and all of a sudden it looks 10 times better. Yeah. Do you see this becoming like a desktop version? We have one already. So this yeah. exact camera that you see right here, yeah. we have, it's just exactly that with a little USB out. Little cable uh, right on, so you can actually buy that today from us. Oh, really? Yeah, it's um, awesome. But but the difference is it, that uses the processor on your computer, right? Which may not be as good, right? So if your computer starts to have problems, or you're loading a PowerPoint, or you're yeah. doing something in the background, yeah, that's where I think there's yeah. a lot of problems with doing, yeah. like today, uh, the Google Hangouts and all this stuff yeah. is that. If, if somebody's computer is downloading BitTorrent in the background or their da their Dropbox decides to sync or whatever else they have going on on their desktop, yeah. Evernote syncs, like all of a sudden the fidelity of the call goes crazy. Like I think you need to have like dedicated hardware to do this properly. Yeah, for now. Eventually, yeah. they're going to get better and then we won't you know, have problem. Everybody keeps saying that. I, I know, don't right? buy it. You know why? Because I think that everybody keeps making things that are much more um, – uh, that take over so much of your – bandwidth and processing and it tries to do it faster. So it's like, oh, Evernote needs to sync. Well, let's just do it as fast as possible and take as much bandwidth and circuitry as we can. Right. And then all of a sudden it degrades. What what I like the idea of is I don't know why they don't build in like multi-processor, multiple independent operating systems. Mm -hmm. right? That would be that would be an interesting way of going. Yeah. You we know, we actually did that recently. We built a desktop unit. Yeah. It's called the the I call it the telepresence. Yeah, Touch. you show this to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And that thing has a dedicated processor just for the video and audio. Yeah. And then you plug in your laptop as your main compute device. And right. so that way we, it's like a coprocessor for video. We totally yeah. offloaded it. It can never go wrong, ever. Right. And your computer awesome. could crash and you'd still be on the you'd call. Still be on the call. No problem. Yeah, see, I think that's the future of this. Yeah. So how are you going to get this out to the startup community? And then what about the integrations? Because, you know, it's, anybody can rebuild, you know, HipChat, Slack or whatever. But really the value in these companies is the level of yeah. integration. So like, exactly. you know, can you put GitHub? Can you put yeah. Zapier? If this, then that. I mean, in fact, God, yeah, the, we're, we're the list of people who have integrated with HipChat and Slack is so impressive. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's impressive. Hundreds, if not thousands, so, of integrations. Yeah, so absolutely, we're going. So we bought, uh, we just recently acquired Tropo, who have mm -hmm. two hundred thousand developers. They understand how to build web scale platforms for mm -hmm. developers. Okay, so they are the core, sort of the nucleus of the team that's going to build the next generation. This this platform, mm -hmm. we're actually launching webhooks imminently, mm -hmm. which will give us a bunch of the integrations. We already have a bunch of those integrations working internally. But the more important thing is not us, like whether you can use this or HipChat or Slack or what have you. Okay, that's that's interesting. But what's more interesting to me is we've built a platform where fundamentally. Uh, 
anyone can integrate real-time communications like we've just shown yeah. into your app. So I actually mm. want to power, I, I can do all the plumbing for these large enterprises right. you know, with the internet, with the cloud and getting all the security stuff right so that I actually want to build a community of startups on top of this platform to, mm. to usher those companies into the enterprise. Like I said earlier, enterprise is hard. It's generally hostile to startups. Okay? Yeah. We don't like that. Cisco gets it. Yeah. So we're using that Cisco DNA, but building an open platform that star other startups can build on top of if you want to bring communications app into the apps into the enterprise, that's going to be fundamentally powered by our so platform. So if I wanted it's to all make be open. like a podcasting app and use these uh, for my podcasting app no problem. as the recording device and, you know, Cisco's yep. never going to make like okay, we're all going to have these Cisco QX10s do a podcast and we're not going to, you're never going to switch, stitch it together no. or make RSS feed, you know, and yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're going to make an open platform for you to build that and make it really, really, really easy to integrate communications uh, directly into your app, whether that's messaging, voice, video, a hundred people on video, a thousand. In fact, you know, you're talking about, you know, using this in your, in your show. So, uh, I don't know if you watch Jim, Jimmy Kimmel ever, but he's got yeah. this, he actually has using the variant of this technology called, um, uh, wall of America. Hmm. That wall of America is a giant wall uh -huh. and he has like people call, call in from all over the world. That's using our technology. Oh, that's Cisco. Yeah. Oh, it's powered by Cisco. Yeah, it's all so powered he by Cisco. Has, He's well, the only one in the world that has it today. We started with him to kind of prove that it works. So the way it works, you go to his website and you log in and you're boom, you're live HD on his on his show. And there's from no your camera though. From whatever camera you have on your a laptop. So he probably sends good cameras to all those people. Nope, to make he doesn't. He doesn't. No. What he does is he has producers that make sure that the people who are dialing in have good computers. Ah, and, and then they, they go through it and they're yeah. like, okay, make sure you turn off your drop. We do yeah. that too. Yeah. And it never works because yeah. then we have some person on like Robert Scoble or somebody and they're just like, we tell them to do all this stuff. And they're like, yeah, no, no, I turned everything off. And you're like, no, you didn't. Did you, have you ever rebooted your computer in 20, have you rebooted yeah. your computer in 2015? No. Right. You have memory leaks everywhere. Yeah. See what I like. The go idea. watch Kimmel. It's actually, it's amazing. The quality. Yeah. See, what I would like to see is, I wonder if you could give those away to any company or like every five employees that you have paying at 125 a month, you get one of those, yeah. you know, if you have a two-year contract, whatever, like that bundling, so that more of these can get out on the wild. Exactly. I, I want as many of these and our other devices out there at the at, yeah. low, at low prices, at affordable prices yeah. with this like attention to detail and quality. Is it meant to be thrown on the desk like that? Because I see that the Cisco logo is upside down. Yeah. So, so it's that's a, good, it's a, a good, little it's a good, weird, it's right? A good point. So for example, if I put, let's get the self view up here. Yeah. Just to show you that. So and you have a nice, wow, look how beautiful that is. My God. So here's you. So part of the thing is like. Why, when you move it, it doesn't blur at all. It's just incredible. The image, like this looks as good as our studio cameras. Yeah, it's great, It's right? incredible. So, so it's part wild. of this was no matter how you set this thing up, it just works. No IT person right. necessary. So if I flip it over, you said the Cisco logo is upside down. We can fix that. Oh, wow. So it's got accelerometer. Yeah, in it. we just saw it. And that was a few pennies. But yeah. the point is, of course, think about like, that. Yeah. Right. It's just like it, what you're basically doing is you're taking those systems um, that all had problems in, you know, like you basically went in there and you uberfied the Cisco product line, which yeah. is to say, what sucks? Yep. Fix it. Exactly. Right? And like, that's what big companies don't do well. We were talking before yeah. about Microsoft with Windows. Yeah. They don't, they're not like, what's the list of all the complaints? And like the list of the complaints of all these conference room systems was, yeah. how do I log in? What's the phone number of it? You know, how do I pair it? How do I get somebody on the other end? Like, yeah. you just went down and were like, how do we just make this dead simple? And it just works. Well, I, I had the benefit of not having any background in the technology side in, in yeah. communications. So I just said, here's the experience I want, guys. Yeah. Go Maybe figure not. it out. And then this mounts on the wall, or you have all kinds of mounting kits so for this? So it mounts on the back of the TV, so right yeah. above the TV, or just you can that? put it on a like desk. some sort of clamp yeah, or so something? No, simple little, uh, ah, Visa. we have a vase mount that you can buy. Oh, there's a vase mount, right. Yeah, and you just Which is like a on. standard, right? Yeah, standard, standard kind of like, and it mounts on a TV, and then it has basically just HDMI out uh, for audio and video. And that's, that's what amazing. this is coming on this right here, is, is HDMI. It's just gorgeous, man. It's really like, I really want to like see a world in which like, everybody has these things and mm -hmm. video conferencing, like it's just more efficient. Cause right now it's like, I do a lot of video conferencing and I use GoToMeeting, which is fantastic. I really think it's a great product. You but should use WebEx, but yeah. Oh yeah, WebEx wrong. is a competitor to that. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I just been using GoToMeeting for a long time, but so maybe WebEx is just as good, but um, you know, the hardware has always been the issue yeah. and like the conference rooms have always been the issue. So we tied them like this. Yeah, it's really tight.
Yeah. Well, congratulations. So WebEx integration into this natively. So the whole idea is you could join a WebEx yeah. and you could join a teleport. It's the same thing. So the, yeah. this is one another problem in this industry is, and it's kind of just a historical thing. Mm-hmm. You had a video conferencing industry emerge and a web conferencing industry emerge. And, and you, you had, had to the choose. Conferencing, and you had also right, audio, the, audio bridging. Audio bridging. And then you also had these chat yeah. rooms. Right. So you again, call, back to you like, call business message. I just right, call them chat, chat rooms. rooms. Yeah, yeah. So my thing was like, I think from the user's perspective, you th- if you're a user and you sit there and go, let's have a meeting. Oh, what kind of meeting are we going to have? I got to be, vi- you know, video conference. Oh, you've got one of those. I have one too. Oh, you only have GoTo. Okay, let me use that. Oh, you yeah. only have WebEx. Oh, now let me ask you a tough question. We made then. them all. All those things. Literally, that has to all go away. In terms Jason. of the open stuff, would you allow Slack and HipChat? to integrate calling into these? Like, so if, let's say my company doesn't want to give up Slack or HipChat because we have special integration we built, would you allow us to connect and use those routers eventually? Is it that open? Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, uh, we're, we're... So that's, yeah, I, I think that's super cool. Yeah, I haven't like finalized on that front, yeah. but I definitely want the ability to have anyone write an app that can, can do this. So, you know, in this case, we have an app that competes with HipChat and Slack, uh, but I would like to enable them with video. So the number one requested that's feature on Slack... That's the number one thing to do. The number one thing on Slack right now that they're asking is for video is video. Yeah. So HipChat's got video and audio. It's I'd love okay. to power it. Yeah. I'd love think, to power it. See, that's I think would be the key is if you guys can convince the you know the the brass as it were at Cisco like that's to me. think that's you right. Yeah. So you are the brass. I just have to convince myself that there's right. a business case, and I think so. There I is think a there is case. a business case, which is you make some margin on those, and then there's some fee for yeah. using that, right? Yeah. So. Because you have so many, you have such in, so many people loyal to Slack. I have a group of people loyal to HipChat. Like people don't want to like give those up. Yeah. You're going to be competing with them. So like, it's almost like when my strategy is not to make every single collab app in the whole world. I want to yeah. just enable all these startups to build on my platform. Right. Because if you think about like how Apple has done it with iOS, I yeah. think Apple is really the gold standard they now are. for how to have an ecosystem <laughs> that yeah, sure you compete with them to a certain extent, but you let the best of breed grow. So. Nobody, anybody who buys an iPhone can use their contact manager, they can use their calendar, they can use their stock app, they can use their mail client. Yep. But everybody also knows that Mailbox, now owned by Dropbox, Sunrise, now owned by Microsoft, you know, right down the line, Instagram, whatever, are better than the native apps on the phone. Exactly. And Apple, it almost seems like builds their native apps to like this point, and then they're like, okay, yeah. up to you guys to, and gals to go take this to the next level. Right, right. We're going to, you know. But where they haven't done that yeah. is where it goes real time because it's hard. FaceTime, for example. You yeah. can't just embed FaceTime in your app. Hello? That's yeah. what I'm building. I, yeah. want, I want you to be able to embed that right into your app. Yeah, you know what would be a really good acquisition for you guys is Talkbox. I don't know if you've seen that startup, yeah, yeah. but Talkbox yeah, is Yeah, they've really, done some interesting things with yeah, video. Yeah, it's a Sequoia-backed company. They started just trying to be like, they could never get the consumer version to work where they were like, hey, it's going to be free Skype in a browser window. But they really made it work. And now all these startups that I see that are doing video conferencing or doing video stuff, I'm like, is that Talkbox? They're like, yeah, I'm using Talkbox. So mm-hmm. it's sort of like the Twilio of video. Right. Back and forth, but you were kind well, of already bought, had that. We bought Trapo, right? right? Who had the they had voice and SMS APIs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have voice and SMS. So like Twilio. Yeah, and then we have all the video, all the stuff I just showed you. Those are our yeah. APIs. So we yeah. have now actually the full the full complement. Uh, it's just a matter of opening it and publishing it, which will happen this year. All right. Well, this has been amazing. Um, really appreciate Cisco coming on the program and being honest. It's nice to see like the big companies working nicely with the small companies. Yeah. What do you What do you think is the key to good M and A? Um, you know, having been at like big companies for two decades and having seen a lot of stuff bought, I'm sure you've seen things get bought and killed. I've seen things bought and thrive. Most of them fail. Yeah. yeah. But they, why, so why do they keep happening if most fail? Like what's your theory on that? Because I have a theory, but I want to hear yours. Uh, they're hard to do, first of all. Right. I, you know, there's a, great quote from, uh, there's a great quote that I love from Joni Ive where mm-hmm. somebody said, why don't you do more acquisitions? He says, it's a lot easier to design a product than to design a team. Right, and when you are acquiring a company, you're you're basically just getting a team, right. and it's like here you go. So it's yeah. really hard to do, which is why yeah. I focused on teeny tiny little acquisitions, yeah. where I spent most of my time thinking about the cultural fit. Uh, I, I care less about the technology and more about how are these people going to work with my team. Right. So each of my acquisitions were ten people, <laughs> except for Trapo was the biggest one at forty. Wow. I'm not a fan of big large acquisitions. I'm not a fan of big companies in general. I think as yeah. we've seen the trend kind of move into yeah. more smaller companies. Uh, I have a theory. This is my continue. theory though with M and A. Why it keeps happening? Because when it does work, it can be so transformative that it pays for the misses. It's yeah. almost implied odds it's like, like poker. Venture, yeah. It's like venture or poker where like, well, yeah, I shouldn't be playing five, seven of spades 
against three people who raised. Right. But if the board comes like four, you know, six and an ace, uh, oh my God, and I can hit a, a flush or a straight or whatever, like this could be a disproportionate win where nobody would ever expect I have this straight. Yeah. Yeah. And they, everybody's got an ace king or an ace yeah. queen or this is why, a set. This is why playing poker at your house is difficult. Yeah, <laughs> because you guys I'm like, a chase maniac. everything. <laughs> no, I just, I, I think I live for the implied odds. But if you, you think about it, like, you know, so many things didn't work at Google and then they hit Android right. and YouTube. Yeah. And it's like, Maron, this is incredible. Then like Facebook hits WhatsApp and Instagram. Yep. And Twitter hits Vine and Periscope. Like, it could be tr totally transformative. Be. And everybody obsesses over, like, oh, these, you know, nine didn't work or these 90 didn't work. If the one yeah. works, yep. like, if this product line works, you know, Cisco could go from being this, like, something that when your company hits 200 people, you, you sort of start to engage in Cisco. But most companies are small. Yeah. I mean, you could have mom and pop shops yeah. and this could be a consumer level product at yeah. some point i think yeah. Yeah. do you think this could be like a consumer thing like if i lived yes. you know i don't yeah. know because like i got my samsung tv and then it's like yeah. a little camera popped out of the top and you yeah. can skype with it yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not very good, good. It's terrible but it, it does show that like yeah. video conferencing for families could be something well, there's nothing you, you could take this home and use it and it would work just fine with yeah that, with everything that you already have now that i mean you downloaded at the beginning of the show so See, that's i think would be a very interesting thing when like vcs go on vacation take away. to italy for a month or like your startup is working remote or one of your develop like let's say you have we have i don't know seven or eight remote developers and so it seems like a lot initially to think oh my god 1500 each but then when you start thinking about it if it made people use it for one hour more a month right. each and you got another 50 hours or yeah. let's say 100 hours of collaboration, 100 hours of collaboration are worth at least $200 each or $100 yeah. each. So it pays for itself. Yeah. If you, if you value collaboration. If you And if you don't, then you're, you're going yeah, to get your ass kicked. In, this, in the world we live in today, it's just yeah. a fact. I mean, see, I think like, that might be like the case for See, this. people are always trying to uh, justify this stuff on the basis of efficiency. And my argument is efficiency is not relevant in an exponential world. What's relevant is agility. How quickly mm -hmm. can you adapt right. to the changing world? And, the, and, and you, you, when you hit product market fit, yeah. you get outsized returns. Right. Then you can care about efficiency. Like like WhatsApp had 35 developers and 500 million users. Like then you yeah. can like sit back and go, does efficiency matter? Like look how efficient we are. It's crazy. But what was important in the early days is they could move super super fast. And that's where mm -hmm. collaboration, particularly I mean like so we live here in San Francisco, uh, where it's getting harder and harder to get great talent because the competition is insane. So when you start and getting the real them in other estate places, cost exactly around here. I mean you know this building even this building is crazy. Well, I mean it, we're in the, we're in the Twitter loin and it's like in the Twitter loin it's six hundred dollars a day desk or $700 a desk. Like it's the worst area I've ever, yeah, it's not. It's the worst era, area I have ever yeah. been in my life. And I'm from New York. Yeah. Like I've seen some bad areas. <laughs> and I, I, this is horrible. I mean, yeah, but I, I believe that, that the next generation of the internet uh, is going to be all about building this stuff into everyday life. Actually, Steve Case has that kind of, I think yeah. he, already, he, he wrote something about that, but um, getting it embedded into everyday life means that the innovation has to spread beyond Silicon Valley. It has yeah. to go at like, do you think the next oil and gas startup is gonna come from Silicon Valley? Probably not. It's yeah. probably gonna come from Houston, like yeah. like retail, oil and gas, like all these verticals where they're gonna to wanna to integrate all this stuff together. Yeah. They're gonna to have to come from all over yeah. the world. Then again, transportation was something that we didn't think would come from here and that's kind of worked yeah, out for cars, Uber. Uber. And then you have like the hotel industry yeah. kind of working out for yeah. Airbnb. Yeah. I'm trying to get Brian Chesney on the program. Oh, really? Get him to a fireside chat. It's literally been like five years of trying. Brian, come on the show. Somebody's got to be friends with Brian Chesney. Yeah, like, I go. really respect the okay. guy. <laughs> and I really love Airbnb. I'm like trying to get him on the program. Brian, somebody sent a message to Brian was friends with him. I just I, I asked him seven times. Okay. Maybe the eighth time will be the charm. I know you're not going to give up. That's what I wrote. I, I know wrote, you're not going to give up. <laughs> I wrote in the subject line to him today, seventh time charm. <laughs> and then I wrote at the end, I really want to have you come to the scale conference. And it's like, you know, you want to interview somebody because you're just so fascinated by what they've built. Yeah. I'm so fascinated by what he's built. Like, how did they ever think that sleeping on somebody's couch would become a $20 billion business? Did they have any conception when they started that couch surfing insanity? It's amazing. That it would actually... It, you know what the, what's amazing to me about Airbnb, and it's very Uber-like in that way, which is people didn't anticipate Uber. They're like, Uber will compete with taxis. They never anticipated it would, you compete know, with cars. compete with owning a car. Yeah. And now Airbnb is like, it's not really competing with hotels. It's competing with how often people travel and how long they go away for because right. people are now like, I can afford to go on vacation longer. Right. 
I can afford to take more vacation. Therefore, I could maybe work less. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll try to be an on-demand worker. Yeah. So the on-demand Airbnb hosting, where people make extra money, is driving people to take less full-time employment, right. maybe be an Uber driver or whatever, and then Airbnb their home, and then have a better lifestyle. So this all this efficiency, and like Airbnbs and Ubers of the world, it's mind-blowing, like... These are things that weren't considered when they started the companies. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who thought companies would think about employees differently? Yeah. And that employees have to think about, well, great. So now I can make my living a lot of different ways. It's amazing. You see that in the city. I like when I jump in Ubers, I'm always talking to the drivers like, what do you do? And like, I'm a software engineer. Really? Like, yeah. it's amazing. Like the, 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 the diversity of the kinds of workers they have. Well, and then it's like push a button, work push another button, stop work. Yeah, exactly. Like, whoa, that's kind of a dream. Yep. You know, like, and whether it's for Lyft or Uber or for the food delivery services, you know, or for Airbnb, like push a Lux. button, rent your house. I just used Lux the other day. That, Lux is insane. Oh my God. I, I went I'm, to Lafayette Park with my kids. Yeah. It's always impossible because like Uber doesn't have family yet. By the way, we need Uber family. Yeah. They have uh, New to York my, Two kids. Yeah. So I showed up at the park. The guy was there. I got out. Like I literally left my house, hit the Lux button. Yep. 10 blocks later, I get to Lafayette Park, yep. he, and, you, and it's impossible to park there. Yeah. Get out. He takes my car. You know, I'm done an hour later. My kids are like, let's go, you know. To Press the whatever. button. The car's there. Boom. Amazing. Yeah. I don't know how the Lux, I looked at investing in it, and I liked it. The valuation had kind of, like things tend to do here in this town, gotten ahead of itself. In my estimation, I could be wrong. I'm probably going to lose a lot of money on it. But what I noticed was, like, there's no way for this to be profitable. Mm -hmm. Like, I did the analysis. Mm -hmm. But now that they're doing surge pricing, and maybe if people become addicted to it, like at fifteen dollars, capped out for the day, I was like, this is impossible, including tip. Yeah. Then they added the tip. Right. Is on top of it, so now it's more like seventeen fifty yeah, or eighteen. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, it's surge pricing at one point five or one point two. Okay, now we're at another three dollars twenty bucks. Yeah. I think it's a twenty five dollars a day service if you use it, right? not a $15 service. So right. I think they're just edging their way up there. But you it's know. quite addicting to have somebody yeah. waiting for you to Get take it. your car, and yeah. then they just arbitrage because they buy these spots on the monthly basis. I don't know where they park the cars. You must know. I do because I have a Tesla, and it tells you where it's parked. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, when you park in the financial district, they go to the piers, and on the piers, the piers have um, really cheap parking. Uh. They don't just rent the spot for the 10 bucks for the day. They rent it for a hundred bucks for the month, so they go rent ten spots or twenty spots at each of these parking lots Smart. for maybe fifty percent of what we would normally rent them for. So if they if the lot across the street here in the Tenderloin is ten dollars a day, it's 10 bucks a day, yeah, and that's two hundred dollars a month, they rent that same spot for a hundred, right? But it's not utilized all the time, right? Therefore, they're getting it for more like five dollars per yeah. park or whatever. So that's so, pretty sad. So they have a window. As long as we still own cars in San Francisco. Well, that's the other thing is like, I'm like, why do I own this car? Because, you know, I do some days where I just do Uber only, like today's an yeah. Uber only day. And I'm like, you know, if you just put your travel cost at 20 bucks a day for an executive or 30 bucks a day for an executive, it's kind of nice to be in an Uber and be working. I started doing Uber pool. It's even better. Did you really? Oh, yeah. It's You're amazing. rich, dude. You don't have to do Uber pool. You know why I like why it? Why do you do it? Well, <laughs> number one, I actually meet people. It's amazing. So you like that. You're I'm an extrovert. Met, I met someone who works in the same building as me and who lives on the same block as me. So you guys are now Uber pulling together. So Uber is actually working. I haven't stayed in touch with any of these people, but right. like, you know, it is kind of nice to be able to do that. And number one, and the second thing is half the price. It's like 15 bucks, okay, from yeah. one way to my office. That's 30 bucks a day. What's Parking the longest it's what's the longest it's um taking you out of the way? Like maybe five, five minutes. minutes. Five minutes. Right. And what I do a lot of times, if I'm the second person, I'll cancel it. Oh, you know. Yeah, you. Can oh, so that. there's a little gamesmanship going yeah, on here. Uh oh. Yeah. They uh -oh. might clean that up, and the and then maybe a little. That's little, a little. Pull. They got to fix that. But yeah. I wait, and then I do it again if I'm the first person, because then they. How drop do you know you it was the first or second? It tells you. It tells you. It tells Here's... you who you're matched with. Oh, I see. Yeah, and so you yeah. automatically know. Here's the thing, Rowan. I'm very famous, uh, <laughs> and you know I have a podcast that's on the internet. Yes. And so it would we be very that. hard for me to be. It would a, be difficult for you to have to rub elbows with. No, the I do it all the time. I love it. It's like literally the. the You're from New York, man. You should be I in the love subways. it. No, yeah. I have to say, like moving up here, like since I've been living up here, we knew each other in LA. It's just been so delightful for me, and people are like, "Oh, I hate to stop you." I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, it's awesome, right? But stop me. Take a selfie. Yeah. Let's talk about what episode you like best. Exactly. I can't believe that. Anybody even everyone, watches the show. Everyone, stop Jason and ask him to tell, take selfies. 
I, yes. You know what I do is I do the power move now. When people stop me, I, t- I, I give everybody on the show explicit instructions and on Twitter. If you see me, please say hi. It makes me feel good. Yeah, and exactly. please tell me which episode you like and why. It makes me feel good. Yeah. For, for my benefit, yeah. please tell me you're a fan of the show. And then whoever I'm with, especially if it's my wife so I can impress her, <laughs> right? That like, hey, look, people will actually watch the show. <laughs> and then I do the preemptive selfie, which is I say to people when they do come up. I say, no, I don't say, do you want a photo? I say, can I, may I, can I take a photo? Nice. And they're like, uh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, great. I take the selfie. I tweet it. I blow them up to 200,000 people. Nice. And I'm like, my God, I love being a celebrity. That's awesome. I love being a micro celebrity. <laughs> so, and so, who are these people who complain? We know all these celebrities in LA. They complain about, they fight their whole life to get any kind of notoriety. And then when they get it, they complain. I know. It's I am little, so it's happy odd. It's odd. to be a micro celebrity. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And you're a good micro celebrity. I'm a, I, you're taking I'm a, your own selfies. I take selfies. Promoting people. I'll, I'll return an email. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever it takes. Yeah, it's funny. These other people, like, they're not even. Uh, you know, it's and and it's a little weird. We're in a little bit of a bubble here in San Francisco. I love if it. You, if you went to, uh, but no, in LA, you know, nobody knew who Michigan. I was. Michigan, yeah, uh, in LA, right? Yeah. No, in LA, it was fantastic. People were like, "What do you do?" I'm like, yeah. oh, I have a podcast." Yeah, and then they'd be like, "Oh, you have a podcast? Oh, you're a loser." Cool. Exactly. <laughs> I, I used to, I used to be the tech you... guy and be like. Hey, what do you do? And I'd be like, you know, we'd be at these you know, celebrity parties. Like, what do you? Oh, you know, I work in tech. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's nice. So, no, it's amazing. They're just like, how quickly can I get away from you? So when I tell or, people, or be like, like, really, I've been having a problem with my printer. <laughs> that's like, always a good. Oh, one. that's interesting. Yeah. Which in your case was not too far off. It was like, yeah, if you want to defrag your hard drive, back yeah. in the days when yeah. you couldn't defrag a hard drive with that's the operating right. system, it just didn't know that's how right. to do that. Yeah, take me back. Defrag to my, my your early hard drive. Days. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. All right, listen, everybody, um, go check out CiscoSpark.com, CiscoSpark.com. Very cool product. I got to get myself a couple of, send me, a couple, send me one of those. I yeah, want to play with it. that. Yeah. Um, and uh, thanks to the sponsors, and uh, thanks to Jackie, and thanks to Jacob. Teardrop, Jacob's going. Mm, I'm going to miss you, Jacob. Um, and thanks to Ashley, and Bryce, and John, and Luke, and Matt, and Michelle, and everybody on the team. I probably left somebody out there. Brycey Poo, and everybody. We will see you next time on This Week in Star Wars. Bye-bye.